Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Lindquist, and you're used to me on my channel talking about accent reduction, voice, and ways to make yourself more free in your speech and more clear in American English. But today I wanted to share something a little bit different with you, because I know many of you are public speakers. So you may be working on your breathing for speech. So I wanted to share a personal story and a speech with you today. So about six or seven months ago, I joined Toastmasters. I've never been a member before in my 25 years of coaching. However, I decided to join and they had a contest recently. So I competed in the contest for fun. I won my club in the area, but when it got to the next level, I don't remember if it's district or division, something like that. Many of you probably compete and know. I got disqualified and I got disqualified because I went over my time. And those of you that compete in Toastmasters know there are very specific times and rules, which is great, good for them. However, what I want to share with you is how speeches affect your voice. And since I spent so much time perfecting my speech, I wanted to share it with you. I won't be timing it or giving myself a red light if I go too long, because in life, sometimes you have to go long to make your point. So I want to start by just doing the speech for you, and then I want to invite all of you to comment. You can comment anything you like. I just want you to see how what I'm teaching you transfers to speeches. That is not necessarily the messaging, although it could be, but also how you control vocal quality, how you do eye contact, anything you want to talk about. And I'm not again also saying that it's perfect. I'm just throwing it out there to show you that I also like to do public speaking from time to time. So here's the speech I did at Toastmasters. I called it the bucket list speech. And it went something like this. What's on your bucket list? Oh, you don't have a bucket list? Well, let's fix that. First, you got to have a bucket and then you got to have a list. Because if the pandemic has taught us anything, it's that we're not going to live forever. So if you want to do something, you have to do it now. But if you're like most of us, your bucket list is a blank sheet of paper. So let's do something about that. How can I fix that? Well, maybe you could put something on it that you feel passionate about. I know, like uh, going to Hawaii. Most of us get excited about going to Hawaii, but then again, that's not very specific or very actionable. How can we fix that? Ah, how about this? I'm going to go with Betty and Veronica from Riverdale High, and we're going to go bodyboarding and surfing USA off the coast of Lanai. We're going to go scuba diving and snorkeling. Now that is an item for the bucket list. I'm going to write that down. But then again, not everything on your list has to be something you feel passionate about. It could be something that you genuinely feel sad about, remorseful, regretful, someone you want to make amends with, like Uncle Jim. We all have an Uncle Jim. You remember how you used to get up at four o'clock in the morning to go catfishing with Jim. You were so excited, you could tell Jim anything. And then you got a little older. And sometimes you said things to Jim and he didn't take it the right way and he snapped at you. And then sometimes it hurt your feelings and you snapped back and then sometimes the words flew and the fists flew. Well, you haven't seen Jim in years. So maybe, maybe you could make it up with Jim, but then again, it could be Aunt Myrna. You remember two Christmases ago, you invited Aunt Myrna over for dinner. The table was immaculate. The cuisine, divine, the audience, and the ambiance. It was jovial. And then Aunt Myrna did it. She brought up politics. Well, a deafening silence fell upon the room. No one said a word. But you knew better. You thought that you were going to say something to Aunt Myrna explain the errors in her thinking because she was wrong so you stepped in and you set her straight only myrna she didn't take it so well she became furious she stomped her fist she pounded her feet on the floor 
The veins stuck out in her neck and her eyes bulged out and she stormed out. Well, at that point, you decided, you know, give Maria a little bit of space. Maybe she'll come back. Who knows? So the next day, you went to Facebook and you thought, oh, I'll look up some of the pictures because Aunt Myrna always took the most amazing photos of family and friends. Only, to your dismay, you found that Aunt Myrna had unfriended you. Not only had she unfriended you, but she blocked you from even messaging her to apologize. So who should I put on the bucket list? Aunt Myrna or Uncle Jim? Uncle Jim or Aunt Myrna? Hmm, I want to put them both on the list because, you know, it can't hurt to make amends with too many people. Of course, I would argue that the most important item for the bucket list is something that makes you feel fulfilled. Something that if you achieved it, would be like accomplishing your mission in life. <gasps> but what could that be? I know. You could write your memoir, your life story. Wouldn't that be amazing? Of course, I know what you're thinking. My life story is not that great. I don't have anything to say. No one would want to listen to me. Come on. Three consecutive tours of duty in Iraq. You've got to tell your story. Everyone has a story to tell. So you start by dusting off the photo albums, and then you've got prom night, high school graduation, and your wedding day. And of course you have those letters. You know the letters I mean. The one from that ex-boyfriend of yours that you couldn't get rid of. I don't mean the letter. You couldn't get rid of him. Finally, you dodged the bullet and dumped him. Of course, he went to prison, but you learned something from that. You learned that just because you love someone, it doesn't mean you can change them. Or maybe, maybe it's that rejection letter. You remember how you wanted to go to that university? You were so excited. You were going to become a powerful attorney and change the world. Only it didn't happen. Your life took a turn. Not necessarily a turn for the worse, but a turn. But of course, you changed things. You made different decisions and you went about your life. You can also write about that. Or maybe, maybe it's that letter of congratulations. You remember that job you had that you just loved? You were offered a promotion, but you had to compete for it with lots of other people, and you got it. You got the letter to prove it. Of course, the problem with that is the job required an 80-hour work week. You didn't get to see your family, your friends. So you learned that sometimes success isn't what it's cracked up to be. It's really important to have life balance. Again, more material to write about. Of course, you have coworkers and colleagues from the past. You can get together with them and down the brewskis. Have a good time, but better yet, talk about the struggles. Talk about the successes and talk about the failures and really get a good handle on what you want to write about. Because at that point, you're going to be able to put together your outline and your rough draft, and then you need feedback. So maybe you could ask Aunt Myrna and Uncle Jim to weigh in and give you some feedback. Because that way you'd have all the information you need to make that story really rich. You might as well, you're going to make amends with them anyway. Your grandchildren are going to be so amazed when they read your story. They're going to learn all about you and your legacy. Now that you think about it, your story has a lot of potential. You know, you could actually get a publisher because then your story could go worldwide and everyone would read it. Because your story, your story is pretty impressive. Now that's an item for the bucket list. Let's so write that down. And at this point, you're probably wondering what's on my personal bucket list. Well, let's see. Ah, make a video on YouTube showcasing the speech where you got disqualified by Toastmasters. I'm going to check that off. Fait accompli. Friends and family and clients and everyone else, what's on your bucket list? So that was my speech. 
But I have to tell you, the part that was different is when I check it off, I say check off entering the contest. But I'm really curious what some of your feedback is about the speech, but not just for me, also for yourselves in terms of breath, loudness, vocal control, pausing, emphasis, all the things we talk about and work on. I know this video was a little longer than most, but I wanted to really showcase what a public speech looks like for those of you that haven't done one. And for those of you that have, I'd love to hear your comments and feedback. Thanks for your time. See you next time.